Okay, we got uh, Joe, Nate, and then Lewis. Joe Manzer, NASCAR.com. Uh, Brian, uh, two hot topics this year, uh, obviously, were the, the Jeremy Mayfield situation. Um, how confident are you in the drug policy you guys have? And, and also, uh, on another topic, Talladega, the drivers were so critical there. What, what are you guys looking at, at, at doing specifically there, if anything? Well, look, we uh, uh, taking the first things first on the drug policy. We uh, believe that we made the right decisions uh, to, uh, to 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 make an already tough policy even more more tough. We think we have to do that with uh, the circumstances that that, that go on uh, in the in the country today and in sports in general, and the fact that we have the uh, a 200 mile an hour race car. We think it was. Uh, uh, very imperative that we have a uh, that we improve our policy, which we did, and we will stand behind that, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, very clearly. And in the future, uh, uh, when it comes to Talladega, obviously uh, there were a lot of things that were <clears throat> sort of, in my view, uh, possibly mispresented, but. That doesn't help us uh, to, to worry about. We had an exciting race. I know a lot of people will debate that uh, in Talladega when you look at lead changes and, and whatever else. Uh, but, we're, but we always look very carefully at Talladega in the fall to, to, to see what, you know, because it changes. And, you know, the, it was the bump drafting that, uh, that we – uh, didn't create a new rule, but we what we obviously did was made sure the old rule was uh, carefully followed. And uh, but it's usually what comes out of Talladega in the fall as to what we adjust, if anything. But usually we'll make adjustments going into Daytona because it's a similar uh, package for the teams in the Super Speedway plate race and all that. And we always learn things out of out of the last Talladega race that serve us better when we kick off the Daytona 500. And I know our group has uh, already had some tests. Uh, we tested uh, Monday and Tuesday after with various packages at Talladega. We'll be looking at those uh, in the future. And, we, and, and, and those are our signature races, no question about it. Starting with the Daytona 500, going to the Pepsi 400, going to Talladega twice. Uh, that's Those are the highest television races, uh, rated races. and. Uh, and we've got to make sure that the racing is safe uh, for sure, and then we need to make sure that it's a typical Talladega, Daytona kind of race, and uh, uh, we, that's what we'll be working on. Nate Ryan, USA Today. Brian, um, I'm sure you saw there was a story in the Sports Business uh, Journal this week t talking about how a lot of top teams are, are – still have inventory available for sponsors next season. And by my count, there are at least five teams that ran the full season this year that are either going away next year or looking to scale back because of sponsorship. With all that in mind, are, do you think there will still be full fields next year? And is it a case that maybe NASCAR needs to adjust its business model uh, for a Sprint Cup team? Because it seems as if with the economy, you know, getting back in line with things, maybe the, 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 the cost structure is out of whack. Well, <clears throat> the cost structure is a function of the free market and what is available at the time in terms of sponsorship, in terms of other uh, related revenues that the teams can uh, can obtain. And uh, we had the same conversation uh, this time last year when the economy was even worse, and we, it was a lot of predictions. And there are always uh, uh, teams at this time of year that are uh, underfunded, uh, that are looking for sponsors. That's not anything new. I think, uh, uh, but clearly the sponsorship market is tougher than it's ever been in, in my memory. Uh, and I don't anticipate that getting remarkably better, although I will tell you uh, we're starting to see get inquiries and our, our New York group and, uh, and the teams uh, which uh, do the selling of the sport are starting to feel uh, the, the ice thawing on that. And there are companies and there are, and I think you'll see some uh, over the off season that are, very close to, to, to joining us at one level or another. It doesn't mean that that will, that will be all perfect from a sponsorship standpoint. Everybody will have, <clears throat> you know, everything that they want from a 
uh, sponsorship on the car standpoint, uh, you know, and for that matter, the, uh, the tracks are working hard to, to renew and secure their uh, track sponsorships, and they're doing a pretty good job of that. Uh, and uh, my sense is it will be difficult, but it's going to be fine, and it will get better uh, as because it's, we still have the, the best value proposition in sports, uh, despite any of the other uh, dynamics going in or around us. It's still the only place you can brand on the playing field in the, in the manner that we do, and we're very uh, 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 proud of that, and we've always built around that, and we will continue to. Lewis. <clears throat> Hi, Lewis Frankie, SPN, the magazine. Brian, on the, again, on the topic of cost containment, is there any low-hanging fruit left? And if there is, you yeah. know, what areas would you like to go into to, to contain costs? Well, there, there's no low-hanging fruit, but, there's, but it's a core competence of, of ours historically uh, uh, to be able to take uh, costs out of the system. We, uh, we, we, it's fundamental to us. We've been talking about it for 60 years. So, uh, and, and, we're, and there are a lot of motorsports divisions and sometimes they, it's important and sometimes it's, it, it's not depending on who you are. The reality is there are some things left that we're gonna, you know, I talked about accelerating policy that obtains that, you know. You'll be hearing about, you know, the scoring, uh, electronic scoring that we use and we have used and can we go fully electronic? And if we did that, what would it save uh, the teams who have to provide scores and uh, uh, other uh, related things. It's in the millions of dollars. We'll be looking at that obviously very carefully. Uh, we'll be looking at anything that we can on the track's behalf, on the team owner's behalf, to do things that don't affect the quality of racing uh, per se. And I understand that's a sometimes subjective uh, uh, proposition. Uh, but what are the things we can do to take their cost model down? And we'll be working on those very hard over the offseason. Okay, we've got Reed, Mike Harris, and Marty Smith. Uh, Reed Spencer with Sporting News. Uh, Brian, this, is, this has been the first full year of the no testing policy. Uh, the policy as announced for next year relaxes the uh, restrictions a little bit and broadens the universe of racetracks that they can go to slightly. Um, do you anticipate looking at that on a year-to-year -year basis and perhaps as the economy improves to evolve back more toward the policy that was in effect prior to this year? And have you seen any perceptible effect of the no testing policy versus testing on the, on the level of competition? You know, I would answer this way. There's, there's some balance between no testing at all, which is the best savings uh, equation for the teams, for sure and uh, having uh, testing the way it was done in the past, which was uh, a, a lot of testing. And uh, because, you know, there's more publicity for the markets when teams are testing, getting the, uh, the events revved up in, in advance, uh, rookies, uh, teams that are not, uh, that, have, that, are, uh, that, that are behind from a competition standpoint can make up some ground in the testing deal if it's available to them. So there's some perfect balance. Uh, we obviously have chosen to go the route of, uh, of the, uh, the cost savings, knowing that that has some consequences uh, that are not perfect for all the things I just described. And as we can dial it back as the economy gets better, uh, we will. And I don't think we'll dial it back to the level we were two or three years ago where it was an enormous cost, some benefit, uh, but too much cost. So we'll be dialing it as we go as we watch the economy. 